Music matters. Mike Saatchi, Mr. Jesus Gang himself. How you doing today, bro? Yes, sir. I'm doing good. Wait, am I gonna be able to? I don't. I don't mean to mess everything up. You're good. I can't hear you in the headphones. Oh, you can't? Uh. <laughs> oh, that's weird. How about now? Oh, I can hear you now. That was weird. You turn all the way down. Well, I feel like I'm on like a radio station. It's cool. <laughs> <laughs> We're on the radio, baby. How are you today, bro? Thank you for coming on. I appreciate it. Appreciate you having me, bro. Mm -hmm. Um, I, your platform is dope. Appreciate you, like, you know, like. Uh, showing love to like underground artists and all that thank you dude thank you dude yeah it was sick to see like because i knew your stuff from him he put me onto it and then it was cool when i got into you to see that you were like from a similar place where i'm from because i feel like i haven't talked to a lot of artists like from the east bay like it was cool seeing that like you're pushing everything you're pushing from the from the perspective of the east bay because i feel like there's not a ton of stuff like that out there yeah bro uh do you know a band called mom jeans oh uh -huh, i know mom jeans they're from pleasanton yeah which is cool because like I found out about them and then I didn't even realize they were from my area. And then when I found out they were from like from my area, it was uh -huh. like, cause that was one like one of my favorite bands too. Yeah. So there is like a lot of dope stuff there, but it gets underlooked and it gets like, it gets kind of tucked in. Like I feel like the Bay area, especially when we were talking about the like rap scene. Like, yeah. It's just, there's not a lot of outlets that are pushing like the new wave there. Yeah. They're just like pushing the, the hyphy movement and all yeah. that, which is still fire, but there's a lot of like new stuff coming out. Yeah, yeah. I feel like people get stuck in like, I don't know, I feel like people are stuck in like the barrier rap scene that existed like eight to nine, that maybe even 10 years ago that was super, super popping. That I feel yeah. like as time got, has gone on, the sound has changed a lot. I mean, you, you were just talking about the Kid Lord, shout out to them. That was like yeah. an artist that we both know that uh, we're cool with. But like, they're a good example of like, in my opinion, what like the new Bay Area hip hop sound is, and everything's yeah. kind of trending that way. But I feel like Fizzler nice. and a lot of these other publications are just covering like yeah. what is in the past, you know? Yeah, like people aren't talking about me or like Zombie Gang or like Kid Lords or like mm -hmm. a lot of stuff that's coming out of there that's like dope and like yeah. it's it's gonna flourish more too like mm -hmm. over time do you feel like like that's a scene where you fit in or do you feel like you trend more in the rap direction or i mean you're doing all this gospel stuff as well like where do you feel like you're kind of niche and like you fit in this circuit because it's been interesting because listening through all your stuff you've definitely gone through a lot of progressions and a lot of changes yeah. over the years with your sound i'm gonna be real i don't think i i don't think i fit in anywhere <laughs> like to be honest i think that i'm currently i'm i'm focused on like kind of innovating and creating my own movement and my own like lane and but at the same time I'm able to coexist and I have like similarities with you know like other artists I guess where like I can still exist in that space and like play shows with those artists and stuff like that but what I'm really trying to do is just create a whole new thing that isn't like I'm like I'm not really I don't really think I, I fit in. And it's not because I'm like not trying to fit in. It's mm -hmm. just more so I like everything. I just have a whole different way of looking at it mm -hmm. than a lot of the people around me. And I think I'm just going to end up like, I think it's just going to end up being its own thing that I don't even know how to explain it yet. Mm -hmm. but it'll just like, it'll just become that like, yeah. No, I can feel it in your voice, man. I feel like I, yeah. I totally see what you're saying because I do feel like it's interesting, right? Like mm -hmm. listening to your stuff, um, like your more your more your more recent stuff. Yeah. Like the Bay Area has always had like a sort of like rave mm -hmm. scene, but now it's been cool to kind of see like that hyper pop scene and like yeah. even like a little bit of the rap scene, like kind of combined with that rave stuff. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of like electronic music I feel like going on in the Bay Area right now, and it's kind of trending in a bunch of cool yeah. different directions. It's really cool. There's a there's a dope scene, and like there's like forest raves those are cool like where uh -huh. they shot the last star wars movie there's like uh performing i remember i performed with my friends at this forest rave and it's like where they shot the last like uh return of the jedi like Whoa. which is hard so like that was sick i'm also, always also a star wars fan so that was like a big w but yeah me personally like the way i look at it is like i have this vision where it's like a like a blurry vision it's not fully filled in yet but i just uh -huh. have like these ideas of like throwing my own shows and those shows being like having like prayer and like being more like about God but in a cool unique way and more so like for example like me growing up like I wasn't able to have that relationship with God because I felt like 
like my dad would bring me to church and stuff like when I was younger and I uh, would like I would sneak out with my friends and get high and stuff like that like I was yeah. like I'm not rocking with this cause and I went to like a Christian private school to like 5th grade like Valley Christian in uh-huh. Dublin and I just like never felt connected to God and but like I felt connected to like rap music and like underground music and like Raider Clan and Space Ghost Perp and all this internet stuff right like dope artists I'd find online but I'm like like and then like growing up and then going to like shows like when I was like going through my breakup going to like emo shows right seeing bands like Wake But Still In Bed it's another dope dude they're super dope oh, yeah. yeah yeah fire and uh, Wake But Still In Bed is so fire yeah. yeah and like I was like listening to a lot of like Midwest emo and stuff like that uh-huh. when I was like going through like this breakup and I remember like when I would like I remember I dyed my hair like pierced my eyebrow my hair was like bright red and I was just like really in a dark place and like that led me to like find God but now that like I have the salute like I found I feel like I found the solution like I look at like a lot of those shows like even the raves and a lot of that stuff like that and I kind of like see like us and I'm like yo I feel like a lot of us are like broken people and I feel like you know God helped me so much and I feel like my life has been blessed the closer I've got the more I've got closer to God so I feel like you know I want to tie these things in together so I can reach those broken people mm. because I was w- one of them. And uh, basically, like, I just want to do it in a way, like, I want to eventually one day throw shows where it's like, you can pull up and be alternative, but it's for God, but it's cool. Yeah. And you're like, it's like, and like, even when I'm at church, I'm like, church is dope. The music is beautiful and stuff like that. I'm thinking about it I'm like things can evolve even on the way here my dad was talking about like they used to like you know certain churches would be pressed about like oh like we should only be singing like the the hymns and the psalms and stuff like that and mm-hmm. they wanted to, to put the like newer age Christian worship music in the churches and people were bugging out about that and then now I'm like thinking about like taking it to the next level where it's like how about we you know mix it with the rave music how about we mix it in like a church well, rave yeah that's what i'm saying jesus rave right yeah. like coming soon <laughs> like <laughs> we might have to collab on that but down, some, but then like reach people and you know come at people in a way where it's not you're gonna burn in hell repent it's like no nah, like jesus really saved me jesus really you know helped me when i was in that dark place and uh, praying upon people that that seed will be planted and that God will do the rest from there. You feel me? Like when I was at this rave, I had some friends perform in LA like recently, like a couple days ago. And I pulled to this rave and I was like praying for people because they were talking to me like there's some people who knew me. And then I was just like talking to them like they they weren't they didn't have a relationship with God. And I was just like yo like can I like we were having like a conversation. I was telling my testimony. I was like can I pray for you? And then, like, I pray for them. Like, there was people, like, hugging me, like, telling me, like, I never had anyone pray for, pray for me like that. And I'm just, like, I feel like I can reach people with it more, like, in a way where a lot of people might not be able to. Yeah. But in a way where it's, like, it's fire. Like, that's what I, what I mean when I say, like, I don't know if I fit in with any scene. It's because, like, I have, mm-hmm. like, a whole different vision of what I'm trying to, like, do right now. And, it, and I don't really see any anything like near it right now it's just yeah. like something i have planned right now you feel mm-hmm. me what do you think would be like the first step to getting like a like a church to embrace that kind of music because i mean what you're saying like I, I'm, I'm not so religious but like yeah. I, I think it's like from what i've seen a lot of you're right like a lot of the stuff in church right now is like older music and stuff like has that music progressed and like how do you how could you begin to mix like your brand of gospel music and like kind of like the rave electronic stuff with like yeah. more of the more the new stuff definitely in like youth ministry and stuff like that like the younger crowd like the uh-huh. church would probably be more open to it because it would be a fun way unique way to get um kids turned up for christ yeah, yeah. <laughs> turn up for christ dude. yeah because because it can be fun like people think that like having a relationship with god is just like being cooped up in your room with the bible just like you know like no like you could have fun and be a Christian, you know what I mean? But like, obviously there's things that are unbiblical, like, like getting like drinking and smoking and stuff like that. But, uh-huh. but what is filled me with the most light, like 
you know and feel me like I'm, I'm sober and like i used to get high all the time i used to do mushrooms i used mm-hmm. to do all that and i don't know like i'm turned i could go have a good time at like at like a function at like a rave or whatever and, and be, be sober. sober and be turned when, off the holy spirit what Put about like uh what about like the god and like uh jesus like what about religion was able to like bring you out of that place where you were getting high out all the time was it just like did you just trust in in the word and then it just like everything else came or <laughs> bro my testimony is crazy bro <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um so what happened was like dude everything like really just like started really happening fast like god's plan for me so basically like i was at a point in my life where like my whole life growing up like i was always like spiritual and stuff like i was spiritual in the ways like like i have indigo tatted on me right here because i believe i i believed i was an indigo child um what does that mean indigo child is like a new age concept where like some people are star seeds some people are rainbow rainbow children like it's like you're you're tapped in and you have like a certain you're like certain a certain chosen person that is very tapped in with the universe uh-huh. or at the time you know and you have like these certain traits and a certain purpose like with your existence and i uh, the in, the purpose of the indigo is to spread spiritual awakening to the masses and like at the time like i knew that like was like i resonated with it but i didn't know how I was going to do it or in what way. Because you weren't religious yet. Yeah. I was. I, I have a relationship with God. I, it's relationship over religion. I'm not religious. What do you mean? Like, I have a relationship with the Holy Spirit. Like, uh-huh. the Pharisees that came at uh, Jesus and were mocking Jesus, they, those were re- people who were re- religious. Uh-huh. Re- I have a relationship. You gotcha. know, like, I have a relationship with God. I talk to God. He's my Holy Father. Uh-huh. Like, you know, like, I don't see it as re- religion. Interesting. So, yeah, I believe that we're on earth to, that's part of our purpose on earth is to have a relationship with the Most High. Like, mm-hmm. I think that that's like, that's the standard. Like, people be like, oh, you're a Christian. Like, it's, well, that's like a new, like, oh, like, but it's like, that's like, this, to me, it's like, that's what we're here for is to have the relationship with the Most High. It's like, existing and and not ever talking to your dad Mm -hmm. you know what i mean like i'm like he's he's the reason why we're here so of course i'm gonna tap in of course i'm gonna start my day thank you lord for giving me this day thank you lord for giving me everything you know help me to and then when i pray also i ask god to take me where he wants to take me Hmm. but if i could go back to the um to the testimony because i want to tell you about this yeah totally so my bad you're good bro um what happened was basically like i was seeking like I was always like spiritual and I was always seeking like I guess like philosophy and truth and like trying to find things out for myself because I felt like my dad was like trying to like make me Christian you know what I mean when I was younger he was just like out of love because he loved he loved me he wanted me to have eternal life you know in heaven but I didn't connect with it and um I like there was times like when I was high school when I when I was in high school where I'd literally tell people I was a Satanist bro like there was, and I would draw pentagrams on my like homework and draw myself like like ha- hanging on a noose and like I was just tapping in with really dark energy and I had these like sleep paralysis dreams like dark dreams about like r- like murdering and like I don't even want to talk about this stuff bro to be honest but I'm just being open right now like mm-hmm. really bad stuff and I felt that dark energy before so like you know, I always like those points where like I knew there was some there was I didn't know it was demons, but I knew that there was like darker energy, and there was um, times where like I was atheist or I have a whole project like I dropped when I was in high school about existentialism, which is basically like when you believe that like you create your own reality, and I used to argue with my dad about like God ain't real, like all this stuff. Like I was like me, I'm the last. I have people that like grew up with me that are like. Yo, bro, like you're Christian, like they're 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 they flabbergasted, it, bro. Yeah. <laughs> like they don't get it. They're they're like, whoa. But um, basically, like I went through all that, and then, but I always like felt like I had a connection with the divine in some sort of way, like. And when you say the divine, does that, does that just mean like God in general? Or I, I went from saying the universe uh-huh. to Most High to saying God. Gotcha. And I I remember like in the past year, past couple years, like I was like you know, more tapped in with the new age spirituality. Like I used to wear crystals and I was like, oh, I want to get my tarot cards read and like all this type of stuff. 
me not understanding that that stuff's idolatry and understanding that, that stuff's actually like you know deception and what the satan is trying to get us to do which is be further away from god and i remember like my dad will always call me and tell me like i'm praying for you all this stuff and i'm like yeah, yeah, yeah whatever and he always like my dad is like a man of god like he always praying for me always praying you know for our family and all that and like I went on a, I went and did a show in like San Diego, and I remember I had like these beat, like these, it was like chakras, because at the time I was doing, I was literally doing meditations that like some gurus even say that can make you have spiritual psychosis. What's that? It basically, it's basically like a meditation that I was practicing that like literally can give you demons. Gotcha. And like invite demons into you, make you get possessed. And like I was tapping in with the wrong stuff, and I remember I went on this, this to do this show in San Diego, and I had these like crystals around my. Like, you know those little beads mm -hmm. and literally at tsa i'm like putting my stuff through and then it like s snaps everywhere and there's beads everywhere Whoa. and then uh i had like on the plane like another time i went to san diego i had this fat amethyst crystals like popping out of my like finger like a like, ring like a ring okay, yeah yeah and like it was just on the other like this lady on the other side of the planes like hey did you drop your ring and there was like t i felt tension like it yeah. was just like wanted to come off me and like, before I even went to San Diego for for uh, one of those trips, like I remember I was at, like posted at the park by myself after I hit the gym and I was like eating some like uh, Hawaiian food or something. And this couple came up to me and they're like, have you heard about God? Like, uh, like trying to give me a Bible or whatever. And I was just like, I was just kind of like, nah, like my dad been trying to push that on me, I'm good. Yeah. And then I go like, uh, then I go on that trip to San Diego and then like the beads like burst and like all that stuff happens and then like I'm like on the beach with my cousin and then the, the people come up to me and they're like have you heard about God and try to hand me a Bible and I told my cousin I was like everywhere I go like God has been like God won't leave me alone and I wasn't Whoa. even really ta like like accepting of God at that point but I wasn't spiritually blind because yeah. I always knew that like things happen for a reason and stuff like that but basically what happened was like fast forward I come back and uh after the san diego thing and like i basically got in a relationship with this girl and and she like you know played a lot of like i forgive her and i have no resentment towards her i just want to tell that like she's part of the story that's yeah. why i want to bring it up not uh -huh. not any way to like you feel me but basically what happened was it messed me up and it put me in a really dark place and i wasn't dealing with things the right way and i started to give god more of a chance at that time like i would go to church and i would pray for our relationship and stuff like that that's even how i found out about like the terminology of like god is trying to pursue you because i told them about like the people at the church about like there's all these signs and all this stuff and like oh god's in pursuit of you like god yeah. god wants to use you for things and then basically what happened was like i just went through like a really dark place in my life and i just wasn't in the right headspace and i just had a lot of demons on me and basically long story short i just felt like i was just in a bad headspace and like to be honest like i was really depressed and i was like suicidal and like i was doing a lot of mushrooms and getting high and just trying to chase body highs and just trying to chase thrills and i just felt lost and i just felt alone and i just didn't you know and even when like i kind of was giving god a chance i wasn't fully tapping in like yo what is he actually like what is he actually saying to me right now like what if i actually did apply like what he's his actual word instead of just going to church and praying and listening uh -huh. to music right so basically what happened was one night i just was in a really 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 dark place after this breakup and i also had a lot of things like traumas and things that i didn't let go of <laughs> and probably maybe even generational curses you know what i mean um mm -hmm. it gets complex and i just basically like i this one night i just like i was giving up on life bro like i stopped drinking water like i stopped eating food like i just like was like i just kind of want to die right now like i, I just kind of want to give up i don't want to do music i don't want to do like i just wish i w was never born like that's how i looked at looked at it and i'm not proud of it but that's where i was at i got in my car bro and i was like speeding and i was like i was just i just had this like vision of myself just like crashing into a a wall like 160 and, and i was just like what if i was still alive though i just wanted to like just really end it right and then so i'm just driving around and then like i like i call some people and i start screaming bro like <laughs> like literally and then I, I i uh 
someone was like, why don't you call suicide hotline? So I call suicide hotline and I'm talking to them. And then like, I go back to my crib and then like, I just like take a bunch of mushrooms. I don't know why I just had like a bunch of mushrooms. I just took a bunch of mushrooms. Uh And then basically like, they told me like, basically what happened was the person I was on the phone with earlier, 5150 me. And then people knock on the door, basically the cops. And then they, they came and like got, like took me and, uh, basically I got 5150 and it was like crazy experience. Like my eyes, like off the mushrooms, like I kept just looking. My eyes were ma- magnets to the camera. Yeah. Like there would be, there's like a camera in the ambulance, and I just kept looking at the, at the, like, uh-huh. camera magnetically. But basically, when I when I got there, like I just felt really alone, and like I just felt, like, you know, I just I just felt like no one no one was there, right? And I was just like holding my like holding my legs like up, just like sitting down, and there was this. This is a time like my hair is dyed like bright red, like Haley Williams, and like basically this dude's like walking. Uh, they give you like these socks to wear and like these like pants to wear, right? Uh-huh. And like this dude's like walking barefoot, and he also has his hair dyed. So I'm like, oh, like in my head, I'm like, if there's anyone Whoa. I'm gonna talk to, it's probably gonna be this guy because yeah. he like looks similar, like he looks like an alternative type kid or whatever, right? And like funny enough, like his hair was like dyed like split like like XXX. Yeah. Um, but. He was an interesting guy, but he like came and sat next to me and he um he came and sat next to me and like he already had it in his hand. Like like he was talking to me and he's like, Oh, you're on mushrooms, so you see it, right? You see they don't care about us, you see they're not helping us, right? And then I like cause there's just like people there and I even told him like, yo, could y'all help me like could y'all help me like after I was like, could y'all help me like find like a therapist or something? And then they never, they never helped me with any of that. And it's supposed to be like a mental health like facility. Right. That's so, terrible. And, and yeah. And like, it's not even over, bro. So yeah. what happened was this dude, like basically I, I'm like talking to him about all this stuff and he, I tell him like, I have so much anxiety right now. Like I've never been here. Like I'm scared. Like when are they going to let me out? Right. And I'm on a bunch of mushrooms while I'm in there. And then, like, I look behind me, there's a bunch of beds, and there's a bunch of people sleeping because it's, like, nighttime. So, like, I don't know, like, I don't know the crazies that are in there. I don't know, like, who they are. I don't know what they're finna do to me. Like, I don't know. Like, it ended up not being, like, the worst thing ever. Like, the people weren't, like, maniacs, like, trying to kill me. But basically what happened was um, he told me, he's like, oh, you have anxiety? Like, here, take this. It was writing in his hand. It was a Bible verse. It was, like, I forgot exact what exact Bible verse, but it was one about being still. And I just kept rereading it, like this was some. Wait, so the, I'm sorry. This was the the guy with the dyed hair gave yeah, you this. Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah. gotcha. And and he and I was like, and I just like kept rereading it, and it was just like helping me, and it made me feel still. It made me feel like like God like put His arms around me, and literally like I remember I was like talking to him, and I was like, you know, like why are you not wearing socks? And he's like, whatever you put on your head, like from your head to your toe, like can control you and limit you, and he just like. I told him I was at the at the time I was still into like new age spirituality so I was like there's this thing called the Hawkins scale what's that it's basically the scale of consciousness and like based on whatever you feel you radiate at certain certain places okay like, consciously almost like a mood ring type but like type on thing. a scale and yeah type thing and like he uh basically like went and printed it out and then he's like what is it I was talking to him about it and he had the lady print it out so I'm like realizing like, oh, this lady prints stout stuff out for him. That's interesting, right? And basically like I drew him like on the back of it. And then I told him like, here, like keep this like to remember me by, right? And I told him like, when we get out, like let's meet one day. And I don't know, like, I don't, I, I never saw him like, you know, to this day or had any like way of contacting him, but- Do you think we'll that, find him someday? Hopefully bro. Like what happened was he, um. Yeah, hopefully he sees this and reaches out. But hopefully, That'd be really cool. He's he basically kept asking like, "Can I have my Bible?" Because his Bible was in his locker. I guess they had a locker for him in there, and they wouldn't. They kept denying him his Bible. And in my head, I'm seeing this, and I'm remembering. He told me, "You see how they're not helping us, right?" And I'm thinking like, "Yo, like, the Holy Spirit is helping me so much in here. Like, this this guy. I didn't fully understand it yet, but like, wrap my hand around it and what God was communicating to me, but." It was like a metaphor for the world. It was a metaphor for, you know, mental health and, and the spiritual warfare that we're fighting that we just say is a mental health battle, right? And basically, like, he kept they kept denying him his, his Bible. And, like, it was just interesting. And he was getting, like, upset about it. And then the next day, this is the day I get out. The next day, what happened was, like, 
there's this dude. I have like the eye of Horus like on my shoulder, uh -huh. tat tatted. And a dude who worked at that facility saw that, and like I could tell he felt threatened. He's like, "Oh, you have that? Like, people who like, you know, like people who like seek truth and stuff like that uh -huh. often, like you know, have tattoos like that." And I was like, "Yeah." And he just kept looking at me and like the other homie in there like a lot. Like he was monitoring us because he he knew that we were like. I guess he thought we were tapped in spiritually, so he felt threatened. It was weird, bro. And <clears throat> basically what happened was I end up like, you know, I'm just bored in there. I'm just sitting there. And um, so I go and I talk to my homie and I tell him, like, you got to get out of here. So one day you can be like a like God was calling me to tell him this. And I was like, one day you got to get out of here and be like a pastor, like work at a church, like and, like help people because like, you really helped me. Like and then he was like, I f he's like, I feel like. God's using me in here. And I was like, nah, bro, you need to get out of here, right? Mm -hmm. And then, so what happened was, I, like, go and, like, sit next to him. And he's just, like, reading this Bible verse he had the lady print out for him. That's, like, about rebuking evil spirits. Yeah. And he just starts reading it louder and louder and louder and louder and louder, like, super loud. Like, to everybody? No, to everybody. So, okay, like, yeah. every, so, the, so the people that work there start getting mad, and they come in. And I'm like, hey, bro, like, chill out. Like, like relax, bro. Like, they're, they're going to trip off you. You need to get out of here. And then... They, like, come and take him. And then, like, as soon as they, like, come and take him, like, they're like, oh, Michael Saatchi, like, your dad's here to get you. And then, like, as I'm leaving, I'm walking out, they put him in this room. And you can see because there's, like, a window. And they, like, strap him to a chair and start injecting him with stuff. And he just starts yelling, like, like this, this bi uh, Bible verse louder and louder and louder. And I'm just looking back at it. And I'm just like, bro, like. Dude, this is this is so much to process. Like, you know what I mean? Like, and I get out and then I'm on the way. Like, my dad who lives out here, like he was in the Bay so happened to be in the Bay Area when I got fifty one fifty, right? Yeah. And pick me where, up. Where were you fifty one fifty at? This spot in Martinez. Okay. And there's like Yelp reviews and people say like if there's a class action against this, I want in. Like it, oh, it, it like shit. people been had bad experiences there. Yeah. And um basically um, and yeah, there was something not right about about that. Interesting, for yeah. Real. It was, it, you feel me? I'm glad I get to expose it. Yeah, but <laughs> for sure. But um, basically, uh, what happened was my dad like picked me up, and on the way home, like he told me, he's like, "Your best friend in life isn't your dad, your mom, your brother, your sister, your girlfriend, your boyfriend, your wife, your husband, whatever. Your best friend in life is always God. No matter what, God is never gonna leave you. He's always there. Don't ever forget that, right?" And then he took off his cross necklace, bro. I haven't took this off since that day, bro. Wow. Like, I don't, I'm never going to take this off. <laughs> like, you feel me? Like, and basically, like, um, he told me, go to this church. He's like, go to this church on, uh, like, this Sunday, like, this different church. He's like, it's nearby you. Like, there's a dope pastor. Go, bro. I went there, and they were talking about living an emotionally healthy life. They were talking about, like, it summarized, like, what I was going through and the experience I went through when I was like 5150 and like, you know, spiritual warfare and like, you know, how we think we're living, you know, fighting our emotions, but we're really fighting a spiritual warfare and we need mm -hmm. to fight it spiritually. And bro, I was in tears because, and then the pastor was like, there's so, I feel the Holy, like I feel it in the Holy Spirit. Like I feel the Holy Spirit. Like there's someone in here who really needed to hear this, bro. I, I started crying so hard, bro. I just felt like, like just light, like coming into me and I don't know, bro. And and after that, I just like that's when I just started to start. That's when I decided to start making music for God. Like I was like, yo, I don't know how I'm really about to go about this, but I'm just gonna start. And then I made the keep a Bible song, right? And then the set, and then and then I made this other song. Basically, this dude named LJP twenty nine hundred. After right, he sent me an open to a song he made. I got on it, and then after he's like. Yo, I like the hyper gospel stuff you're doing. Like, send me an open like that, right? Mm -hmm. And then my dad would be on the phone with me. He's like, use Psalms and Proverbs for your music. Use Psalms and Proverbs for your music. And I'm like, okay, like, I'm working on this open to send to the to the homie. I, I'll, I'll, I'll use Psalms because my, and pro, I'll use like a Psalm because my dad would just like keep telling me. It, it got to a point where it was like, all right, I'm going to stop ignoring God because, you know, God's saying something right now. And then I did it. We made it, we put it out, and that actually the song actually gained some traction like la late last year. Mm -hmm. And it was funny because it was like God like wanted like you know obviously there was like I was still newer in my faith journey, so that song was a little explicit, and I didn't have that discernment yet. But um, 
but I felt like that was something that, you know, God had like planned. And then through that song, basically, so I told you I have a collective Disciple Church Jesus gang, right? Yeah. So LJP would tell me I'd be in VC with him and he'd be like, yo, like you remind me of my friend Azrael, like y you and him are similar, right? And I'm like, that's cool. Like, I didn't really know who bro was. Basically, a week after at my homie Azrael, he had schizophrenia. He was in the he was in the in Atlanta. Yeah. He was friends with LJP twenty nine hundred. He was hearing demonic voices in his head, right? And he basically had schizophrenia and he was in a mental hospital. They drugged him up, all this stuff, and nothing worked. And he heard a voice say, like, Do you do you uh accept um Jesus Christ to be your Lord and Savior, right? And he accepted it. And then what happened was after that, he he the demons went away and the voices went away. He got mm. he gets out a week after his homie LJP says, Hey bro, uh I'm shooting this music video, dude who doesn't make like anything in the realm of Christian music, right? He's like Yeah. You, you, I told him I told LJP, I was like, Hey, uh wear like a church outfit, shoot it in front of a church, right? That was the vision I have for it. So then he he links up with Azrael, he's like, yo, Azrael, I need you to help me shoot this video. So Azrael gets out a week later and then he doesn't know who I am and he's like shooting this video for his homie, which is like awesome Christian stuff, right? And he just got saved by God. So then what happened was like, that was God bringing me and Azrael together because now he's like my best friend mm -hmm. and like me and him are doing, pushing this wave together and like, we about to change the world through Christ. You feel me? Like, and basically then we ended up going to london together fast forward we did a show in london and we got a, a tour in canada coming up in april and there's just all these blessings uh coming up to to spread the word and to like spread our testimonies and everything and like you know god had a plan bro i can't make it up bro like i i really dude i was i used to make music about casting spells and i used to try to tap in with all this dark energy bro and like dude i i'm i'm getting closer to god and i i feel so much fulfillment bro i felt alone so much in my life bro like i've always been kind of a weird type of kid bro like i never really fit in with the people around me like i was making music when i was really young like mm. people were just clowning me and i was into music really young and like internet music and i don't know i i just I'm at a point where I, I really feel whole. Mm, that's beautiful. You feel me? And I, I it's it's beautiful, bro. Like, yeah. you know what I mean? I can't make it up. And God has a plan. And like, when I pray, bro, I ask God, like, use me the way you want to use me. Like, even me coming here today, I felt that I, I, I should use, you know, this is, a, this is a platform, which I appreciate you having me on here. Of course, man. To, to share my testimony and to, you feel me, share this with people. And who knows, someone could watch this and it could plant a seed. Maybe it plants a seed in you. Maybe it plants a seed in him. Like maybe, maybe, yeah. maybe it just, you know what I mean? Like, you know, changes something. And also people think that having a relationship with God is like so bad. And that's the deception of the devil because you pray to God every morning, bro. You're going to be blessed, bro. Mm -hmm. Like you, you start your day in the name of the name of God. Like, you're just blessing yourself like dude all this modern day stuff like people are trying to manifest you know what manifestation like like i there's it's like a concept where it's like oh i want to like put my energy towards this so then it happens but then there's like this the, then there's like the aspect of like i spiritually want to manipulate things to go the way i want to through uh -huh. rituals through rocks through this through that and realistically what god has planned for us is much greater than what we we even have planned for ourselves god knows every hair on our head he knows what we want more than we even know that we want that yeah and that's what i realized because i used to swear i used to i'm a completely different i'm becoming a completely different person than i used to even be and i never even thought that i would even like that but i've i have way more peace now bro do you my, I'm going I, off my bad i gotta let you talk dude no you're all bro, <laughs> this is your your story not mine um i'm really interested in, in what you were saying about how you used to be more of a spiritual person yeah. and then like you know that energy was then transferred to your um your devotion to god do you think those things are in direct opposition um mm -hmm. like it's interesting to see see like hear you talk about like you know like more spiritual concepts like even if I, stuff i don't know a ton about but like yeah. you know like a lot of the manifesting stuff or like you said you had like a bunch of crystals and things like that mm -hmm. which are like you know like traditionally more like spiritual things mm -hmm. do you think you can't believe in those and then god at the same time like do you think people are mistaking those things for god 
Yeah. I think they are. I think yeah. they are. I think that, you know, for example, people wear evil eyes, right? Mm-hmm. They're like, I need an evil eye to protect me. Bro, if a demon knock on your door, bro, and you have an evil eye, a demon is not going to flee. If you have the Holy Spirit in your house, the demon will flee. Like, you you want to be protected? Tap in with the tap in with God. Tap in with, with Yeshua. That is the protection you need. Anything else is deception. It's 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 what it even says in the Bible, bro. It even says in the Old Testament. I forgot mm-hmm. what scripture, but it even says they were lighting incense and they were worshiping idols. And I was blessing. God says I was blessing them, and they were they were they were congratulating the the idols and thanking the idols for the blessings I gave to them. Hmm. And it's like, it says in the New Testament and the Old Testament, it's like, you know, I don't know. I, I was at a point like in my journey with God where I was like, I don't believe the entire Bible. I believe some stuff. I'm at a point where I believe the whole Bible. Hmm. Like, you know what I mean? And and the thing is, that might even hurt my own feelings, right? That might even, there might be parts of me where I'm like, yo, but God, I want it this way. But God, I think this, blah, blah, blah. but it's like. God knows me better than I know myself. God knows my purpose on earth. You know, I have full trust in God and I just know it's truth, bro. Like I like I felt the Holy Spirit in me. Like I I've dude, I've tried I've tried so much, bro. I've been I've been spiritually on that spiritual journey for so long, bro. Mm-hmm. And it's like dude, and the thing is, like people who are drug addicts, people who are, you know, going through trauma, people are going through all these things like Bro, if they find the Holy Spirit, they get clo- that relationship with God, bro, and they nurture that relationship with God. Because devil wants distance. What Satan wants is he he knows that if we're like this with God, we're going to be blessed. We're going to be doing good. We're going to have better perspective on life. We're going to be treating other people with more love. We're going to be basically advancing God's kingdom. God, dude, Satan wants to be God. So he, he doesn't want us like this with God. He wants distance from God. So he uses that deception to keep us separate. Mm-hmm. You feel me? No, yeah, <laughs> I, I, I feel like that makes total sense. Do you mm-hmm. think? And kind of on that note, like this, you said you know you were doing a bunch of shrooms and stuff before you uh, yeah. turned to God. Do you think those things are ever like antithetical to God as well, or can they go hand in hand? Because I know there's like lots of accounts of like people you know long long time ago like doing mushrooms and things like that, and doing different psychedelic experimenting and mm-hmm. using that as like a means to find God. Do you think yeah. that's like, um, I guess like antithetical to God's teachings, or do you think that can be like one and the same? I think all you need is the word. Mm-hmm. All you need is the word and the will to want to get close to him. I think that, I don't know, it's just, I don't I don't think you need a dr- you can't find a drug to get to God, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like, God is already there. There's just, there's just stuff in the way. Yeah. You gotta get rid of stuff in a way, and you get closer to him. Uh huh. And you like, think like, other people have different paths to that, and everybody's yeah, yeah. Gonna everyone, it out? everyone is gonna it's it's complex because mm-hmm. that's between them and God, and God God has a very you know interesting way of putting everything together, even in my life, you know. But <clears throat> I think that you know if people want to find God, I think that they should start with prayer and they should start with faith. You know, like for example, like. It says it literally in the Bible, bro. It says um, when Peter was walking on the water with with Christ, right? Mm -hmm. He was walking on the water with Christ, and then wind came, and the wind came, and then he got scared, and then he slipped, and he like he started drowning, and he's like, "Lord, Lord, save me!" Jesus pulled him up, and he's like, "Why do you doubt? Why why do you have little faith?" Right? If you have that faith, and you really tap in with that faith, and you give you give like God a chance like he will show himself in your life mm. it takes faith he wants to know that you believe in him he wants to know that you believe in his plan for you he wants to know that you're not just trying to spiritually manipulate mm-hmm. he wants to know that you're like God take me where you want to take me because I know you have the best you have the best for me and the thing is a lot the thing is like we're spiritual beings who are living a human experience right so we forget wow. we forget that so we we, we forget that and we think that, you know, like God did this to me and, and God, like this is, this is just temporary, bro. Like there's a kingdom of heaven up above, like waiting for us, you know, like this is an experience, but this ain't all it is. We, people are willing to trade the world, bro. They're willing to trade the world 
uh, their soul for the world. They're willing to trade their soul for money in the world and all, all the glorious things. And there's a lot of artists, bro, that literally have done witchcraft to get there. And, and then they tell their fans, hey, follow me if you want to uh, be successful and do this and do that. And they try to get their fans to study witchcraft and all these these things. And they're like, and the, the, the same artists who are telling you, you are you are your own God. Uh, those are people who literally study the occult. Those are li people who literally study sex magic. Those are literally people who, who harness other people's souls and send them to the underworld. Like, you feel me? What do you mean by that part? I, and... I'm not trying to. I'm not trying to air out names. Yeah, no, I got you. Because out of respect, uh -huh, of course. You know what I mean? Yeah, but yeah. there's just some artists that like certain things that that people have done that you know, like I've peeps that mm -hmm. I'm just like, yo, like <laughs> I, I don't like. One thing I want to do with my influence is like when I decided I want to change my YouTube channel to like Positivity Wave, and I want to start putting emphasis on, oh, I'm an artist. Let me try to do something positive. It's like think about influence, right? Mm -hmm. Like. Influence is, is everything. Like, you could be on the other side of the world and influence someone on the other side of the world to, to do something, <laughs> wear an outfit, wear a style, do whatever. Like, when Tyler Crater came out wearing Supreme, there's probably people in Antarctica like, hey, bro, I need that new Prem drop. Like, you know what I mean? Like, it's one of those things where influence is really important, dude. Sometimes I see, like, shows and I see like young people in the crowd and I just see people like on stage just talking about like, I'm a F your girl. I just popped a perk. Ah, and I'm just like, yo, like your demographic is like young kids who actually do the drugs. Like, bro, I grew up, my friends passing away from drug abuse. Like I have, bro, every couple years, it's like another memorial. You feel me? Like it, at one point, do we start realizing that influence is real yeah. and that it it, it, it it does something bro and that if i like let's say like hypothetically speaking bro let's say i become a big artist tomorrow and i'm i got all that like people are looking up to what i'm saying people are like oh i'm a fan of him i want to watch his interviews i want to i want to tap in with him i want to go to his shows i want to put my energy towards what he's doing and let it influence me am i going to lead them down a dark path so then it, it actually affects them and then just sit here just stacking my bread up like look at me I'm up and just flaunt in a bunch of videos like yeah 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 look at me I'm that guy bro that's the world bro I'd rather I'd rather sacrifice the world to have the kingdom of God bro it's so much better bro mm -hmm. and, to, and to positively impact people because I've been positively impacted by or I've been impacted and influenced by my music and things that you know I like mm -hmm. like so I know that you know, I might be able to have that impact as well. And I want to be able to, to be responsible with it. You feel me? <laughs> I do agree with you, uh, especially on the influence point. Like, I think it's very, very, very easy to not only forget that we have influence, but forget, like, how just rampant idolism is in yeah. most parts of art. Like, mm -hmm. it's very, very easy, I think, to, like, especially when you're younger to like look at your favorite artists and look at them as like these idols like look at them yeah. as like these heroic figures you know but it's like we don't realize that just because they're on a stage doesn't mean they're yeah. higher than us like they're we're all people you know we all have the same issues and it, I, I do agree with you like to an extent there is a lot of glorification that happens and i think people don't understand their influence you know like i, I suppose yeah. it would be hard to look out in a crowd of people and know like if the things that you say are actually going to affect them or not mm -hmm. you know dude i have this vision right of like me performing at like a f huge show like a rolling loud or something like that uh -huh. and everyone is like sachi 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 and i stop the crowd like i have this idea like I, it just keeps playing in my head like over and over and i stop the yeah. crowd and i'm like no we not doing that and then and then i make everyone go jesus 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 because yeah. i want to give all the glory to god bro i don't want to sit here like even all the, bl the blessings and success and everything that like i've found in my life bro that's because of the most high bro yeah like it's it's God using me, bro. Like, I kid you not. And I don't want people to, to worship me. I don't want people to idolize me. I want people to get closer to God. Mm -hmm. You feel me? Like, I, I am, I'm God's servant. So and, when you say God, I, I'm very interested in that part. So when you say God uses you and like God, you know, you're God's servant. Do you believe that like you are given a purpose by God and then he uses you to fulfill that purpose? Everyone is. Gotcha. Everyone has have a purpose. You have Everyone has gifts that they're naturally just have, right? Uh -huh. God, those are God-given gifts. 
Mm. God, God made, he knows every hair on your head. He, when you were getting knitted in the womb, he knew you were, were going to be, he knew we were going to be here. Yeah. Like, you know, and, um, like I was saying earlier, like we're all supposed, we're all destined. Our purpose on earth is to mm-hmm. have a relationship with him. Right. Yeah. It's like, even when we're married, like have God in that relationship, like always have him there because that will make our lives more fulfilling. That will make us do the right things. That will make us not going down the dark path, bro. Like, you know, like the, the light always overshines the darkness, bro. You know what I mean? And God wants us to be with the light. He wants mm-hmm. us to be shining. You feel me? He has our best interest mm-hmm. and, and he has our best interest. And that's why he wants us to walk, keep walking with him. Yeah. And, that, and, and he made us a certain way. So when we, uh, he made us a certain way because he has certain purposes for us. Mm-hmm. You know, when you kind of exist in music and you know an industry that like I'm sure as, as like a man of faith like it is there's probably a lot of struggles you have to like look at you know some of these people are thinking and like mm-hmm. do you find it difficult to like preach this message to people who like are just closed minded about it or don't want to hear it or like how do you kind of break through that? Love, because mm-hmm. the Bible, this whole book is about love and. Um, planting seeds yeah like i'm not gonna grab someone like they're a piece of clay and be like i need to convert you like yeah n- no but i'll plant a seed like i like will tell you my testimony i will pray uh-huh. for you i will pray you know that you'll be blessed i'll pray that the holy spirit will encounter you you know what i mean and and if you do want to get closer to god and i can help in any form of way like i'm here like if anyone has questions or yeah you know i'm about to start doing bible studies in my discord server positivity way discord server with my homie Azrael. Mm-hmm. so like you know the people in my community that rock with me that want to get closer to god like we all grow together and just like tap in with the most high and like pray together and like all that you know mm-hmm. like and um love bro like it's walking down the street with a microphone going you're gonna go to hell repent it's like that's not gonna do it. You yeah. come to people and you say, "Hey, bro, look, I was in a really dark place, bro. Like, huh. you say, like I didn't, bro. I am like you. You like crystals, bro. I, I had every crystal, bro. You would have loved my crystal collection. Like, you feel me? Like, we are all the same, bro. Like, we're God's children. Like, God made us. We all got the same heavenly Father. So, yeah. you know, love, love is how love out trumps everything, bro. Yeah, and, and that's what that's what. Jesus did when that's what God did when he sent sent his his son here to, to die for our sins bro he was teaching love he was teaching forgiveness he was showing us how evil we are that we'd crucify our own messiah uh-huh. you feel me like but lo- God's love never went away bro and you know that's like you know I like I I, I pray for people who dude I I'm at the point where like you know I'm praying with my friends who are trans. I'm praying with my friends who are alternative. I'm praying with my friends who got black nail polish. Uh, it, it don't matter, bro. Like, you know, I'll give it to God. And if God wants to change you, you know, God does want to change you. But, you know, if you want to grow that relationship with God, you know, like that's that's between you and God. And um, yeah, bro, love is the answer. <laughs> yeah, that's beautiful. I, I love the way you speak about this. Like, it's very clear that like, like the passion like radiates from 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 your from your voice man like it's very clear it. that like this means a lot to you yeah. like it's beautiful i think not a lot not enough people have like a direct message you know like yeah i think people sometimes aren't intentional with their art and mm-hmm. it's really sick how like intentional you are like it's very clear like you have one yeah. you want to do one thing yeah bro i want to i want to i want to save people the way that i was saved and i want to make it i want to bring people in bro like i i feel like there isn't that space yet for people who are, I guess, alt or like, you know, different and like, you know, people you are like afraid to be, I don't mean cut you off, no, but you're like, good, you're good. people are afraid to be like, to tap in with God. Cause they're like, I'm not ready to go to church. I'm not ready to, to do that. Cause I'm not ready to be perfect yet, bro. You never going to be perfect. When I started my relationship with God, like last year and really started like tapping in and making music for God, like, bro, I didn't have that discernment. I was like over here, like God was here and I was over here. Like I wasn't like this with God, right? So I basically like was still swearing in my songs and still like, you know what I mean? Not really caring about it. And now I'm at a point where like, now I have discernment. 
because I'm walking closer to God where I'm like, yo, if I swear, like I'll be like instantly after I'll feel like the ick after I'll be like, yikes, like not. And it's not because I'm like, oh, I need brownie points from other Christians. It's just that that discernment with God, you know what I mean? That the closer you get with him, you uh-huh. start feeling that you start seeing things different. Oh, I used to like this artist. I used to like his music a lot. Now you start realizing, yo, like he kind of pushing, he kind of pushing, he kind of moving a little, little strange. Like he kind of pushing like some demonic energy. Like what's that about? You know what I mean? Yeah. Do, like, you, do, do you think you want to open up like a bridge to have that community with like Christians and more alt people kind of like collide? Like, cause I yeah. feel like very often those people are like, Op, like the, the, you know they're like opposition to each other I feel like yeah. like they oppose each other yeah we gonna bring everyone together everyone you feel me I, I got friends who are Muslim I got friends who are you know it, I love we love like people think that Christians like don't love other people because some people who are Christian hmm. who those are the usually the ones who are religious instead of the ones who have a relationship with God can you speak yeah. on that a little bit again I'm trying to understand like so you said there's like religious and then there's relationship with God in your yeah. life like why did you start where one was and get the other one and like what does that look like for you having a relationship with God is not just oh I'm gonna pull up to church on a Sunday and and get brownie points it's it's I'm gonna have a real relationship with God when no one's mm-hmm. around no one's looking I'm gonna talk to God I'm gonna talk to my Heavenly Father I'm gonna give him my worries I'm gonna, I'm gonna for real have faith in the Lord and I'm not gonna sit sit out here and be self-righteous to other people you know you can rightfully judge you can tell people like if you tell people like hey like I you know you're going down this path of darkness you know I gave up these things they they helped me they gave me tranquility they or they gave me peace you know what I mean like that's that's having a relationship with God going around people and being like overly self-righteous and you know, being a Pharisee, the same way that the, the Pharisees were coming at Jesus, like, that's being religious. You mm. know what I mean? No, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. I, I, just, I totally see what you're saying, actually. That makes that does make sense to me when you explain it like that. Mm-hmm. Um, I definitely, I feel like when I first found your stuff, I didn't know you were this serious about it. Like, yeah. I didn't know you were, like, this serious about, like, God and the Lord. Mm-hmm. Like, do have you had other people, like, come to you and just not know that this is, like, yeah. a serious thing? And, like, how do you plan to, like, I, I guess it's not really your job to, like, you know, prove otherwise, but uh-huh. how do you kind of deal with that when there's pe- other people who just don't think it's like this serious of a part of your life? Um, they're like, I'm not really worried because they're, they're going to see this is going to yeah. come out. Like I'm going to, and also like I was talking about that discernment, like, um, even like about how I go about my music and everything is like changing. Like the unreleased stuff I have is like more spirit driven. It's more mm. like I ha- do a Bible study with my dad. And then I'm like, after I'm like, okay, let me, uh, let it let me tap in with the scripture that like I heard and put that in in and really make it like you know led by the spirit and they'll feel that and um it's just because I wasn't as close I wasn't as close to God when I started doing it as I am now uh-huh. so it's a spiritual journey in real time course, yeah. in real time I'm getting closer to God and making music and then that will also my spiritual journey with God will reflect in my music Mm-hmm. as well you know what i mean and also just like people who like know me like IRL, they know that i'm like a fun funny silly type person i've always been that way so like yeah like i'm i'm a fun guy like my music is gonna be turned and it's gonna be maybe yeah. the way like i'm marketed or whatever might be like a little fun or funny but god has a, a w sense of humor too bro like <laughs> <laughs> yeah no, that's <laughs> i love that especially like you're like really, really older stuff you know mm-hmm. like it is cool to like see that 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 change in live time like how yeah. like in the beginning you were making a lot more like traditional rap stuff and then yeah. kind of as the years went on you like you know have kind of morphed into the sound which really is very much just you like i yeah, I, I don't really know very many other people like doing what you're doing mm-hmm. have you kind of looked back at your old music and how do you feel about it now and do you want to leave it up as like a you know a snapshot of that first step I want to leave it up because I want to show people the journey. I want mm. to show people my evolution spiritually, and I want to show people. I want people to see where I was and where I am. You feel me? Yeah. And because um, that says a lot, uh-huh. and even a lot of the music I I used to make was a lot sadder because I was, I was, you know, and I was, I had spiritual warfare and I wasn't fighting it the right way. And um, 
Dude, when I first started, like, my music also, the thing is, I want to leave it up because I just want to show, like, the evolution. The evolution of me as an artist is, like, kind of crazy. Cause, totally. Like, dude, I, I I I was, like, when I first started, bro, I was, like, nine years old. How'd and, you like, find it? I found it because it was divine. I mm -hmm. didn't, like, force it. I didn't, like, try to do it. I was, like, I used to just be a cartoonist, and I, like, always loved drawing cartoons. Whoa. And then... I uh, liked editing skate videos and stuff like that, right? So I'd like use Windows Movie Maker and like Windows Paint and just like, I always was just creative. Like they, they used to get mad at me for drawing on my tests and desks and homework all throughout like from like kindergarten to like high school, you mm -hmm. know what I mean? And I never, I never, I just kept doing it. Cause like, like why isn't there already artwork on the desk? You feel <laughs> me? Look at this desk. Yeah, That's what I'm saying, but why not? Yeah. Like, like obviously like keep it positive. Don't be drawing like, you know, inappropriate stuff, but like, Everything doesn't always got to be so. And that's kind of how I, like, see the church, too, is, like, one day when I open my own church, I want to have, like, graffiti of Jesus on the walls and, like, skate ramps. That's but, like, sick. But, like, basically. Yo, the Mike Sachi <laughs> skate ramp church would be crazy. <laughs> but, like, basically um, what happened was I, my older brother had an automotive company. He was a, he's, like, a photographer still. Uh -huh. But he had an automotive company called Stay Steady. And he used to take pictures of, like, dumped cars you know, like stuff like that. And he blog about it on the Stay Steady website. He had like merch, it was like, it was pretty fire. Cool. So he said he's legendary. And basically that's how I got started with music. Cause like I always been super creative. When I was younger, I would run around the house and like pretend I was in a movie, like fading, fighting Darth Vader. Like I always was just in my imagination. And basically what happened was him and his friend are trying to, they did a car show at this dealership nearby and they needed like an, like, a way to promote it, I guess, on the website. And they're like, why don't we grab one of your younger brothers and like interview him like he's a, f uh, a famous rapper. And then like, we'll have him do a song at the end. And then they, they grabbed me and then I did that. And then like, they wrote me a song. I'm staying, I start my engine. I see him grinning and they know we win and I'm staying steady, like something like that, right? <laughs> and then like my, my brother's friend actually like produced it too, it was cool. And like, I went to that car show I remember I came out and I was like, this is sick. Like, you know, cause I was already creative. So I was like, yo, like I, I made a song, like, you know? Yeah. And then I went to the car show and people like knew who I was. And <laughs> my rap name was Kid Mocha. <laughs> Kid Mocha Kid is Mocha. crazy. Yeah, and like people came up to me and they're like, it's crazy, man. <laughs> they came up to me, they're like, yo, you're Kid Mocha, you're sick. And I was like, yo, I'm getting recognized for my art for something I created. And it was sick. And then like, I just kind of took it to the neck by myself and was just like freestyling in my room, uh -huh. watching interviews. And like started tapping in with music more. Before that, the only music I was really like locking in with was like whatever was playing on Tony Hawk Pro Skater 4, <laughs> like TNT, yeah, which was the first song I memorized the lyrics for, TNT by ACDC, off Pro Skater 4. And then- Dynamite. Yeah, bro, yeah. cause it, that song's like a rap song almost, bro. Kinda is, yeah. yeah. And then Christian worship music, bro. Like that was the first music that I was like, from the church, like funny uh, that I was exposed to at really early and then after that, like, I remember just, like, looking into to rap more, you know, being curious about it. And then my older brother had this, like, MP3, right? It was called, like, Zen Neon or something. It was green. And then he had, like, Dead Mouse on it, Biggie Smalls. He mm -hmm. had, like, Mac Dre. He had, like, all this, like, random stuff that, like, Slipknot, like, all this stuff. So, like, I was just, like, heard a bunch of, like, everything. And I was, like, yo, all this stuff's cool, but it's all different. And then I started looking into... Like, I remember I was in like middle school and stuff like that. I found out about like Space Ghost Perp and Raider Clan, Denzel Curry, and like underground music and Lil B and like all that cool stuff, right? And then um, basically, uh, I just, I started making, um, I started just like grabbing a camera and I filmed myself freestyling, put it on Facebook, hmm. made a Facebook page for Kid Mocha or whatever, and was just like doing my own thing with it. And then like, I just like, I was listening to a lot of like boom bap when I first got into it. I was like actually really into like lyrical, hmm. like Wu Tang Clan, Biggie Smalls. Biggie Smalls was my favorite rapper. Lil Wayne was like one of my favorite rappers when I was younger too. And then like what happened was, uh, I would like rap battle when I got to high school. I started rap battling people at school. Whoa. And like and before that, like dude, I dropped. I was like the one of the first sound SoundCloud rappers. I'm not no SoundCloud rapper, but yeah. <laughs> dude, I dropped on SoundCloud in like middle school. People were clowning me song called golden billows i dropped super rare and 
you used to be able to record off of SoundCloud. Oh, I think I remember that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like that's yeah. when SoundCloud was like no ads, like before they like gentrified it or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. And like I remember people were hating, and I just like didn't care. I couldn't wait to go home and make another song. High school comes. This teacher starts hosting rap battles in her classroom. So I started doing, at this time I'm still making music, mm -hmm. like learning how to put my own music together, using Audacity, like a crappy software, you know, which distorts everything, kind of yeah. makes it sound fire. But <laughs> then what happened was I, uh, I was like freshman year, like champion, like beat everyone at rap battle and like was just raw. Rap out the teacher at the rally. They cut the mic on me for being too vulgar <laughs> at, at school. Jesus. I was like saying like wild stuff. Oh, you, you you were rap battling the teacher? Yeah, a teacher at a rally at my is, high school. Is that what the contest Cal California was for? High School? That's what the contest was for. It is, so you won the contest and you got to rap battle the teacher? No, it wasn't. It wasn't really a contest. Oh, gotcha. They were just like, oh, like you've been doing rap battles in, in, at lunch in Miss <laughs> E's room. Like I used to pass out tickets, and then like people would come. Whoa. And like they would be like, Oh, there's too max capacity, like people would be juiced. And I and you could you could swear in Miss E's room and you could do whatever. Miss E you sounds could, hella chill. She's shout out Miss E. That was a really dope time. Thank you for like, you know, like ha doing that. That's really cool, you know? Um and uh and then like they heard about me through Miss E and they were like, Oh, like do you want the student body or whatever? They're like, Do you want a rap battle at the rally? And I was working on an EP at the time called Master of the Universe, the one that's about existentialism. Mm -hmm. So I basically was just like, basically I was just um, focused on that. So I never got around to writing my bars for the uh, the like rap battle at the rally. So I just freestyled it. And then like they cut the mic on me, they sent me to the office. The, the, the principal was like, what if your mom heard that? And like in my head, I'm like, like I was like being a stubborn kid. In my head, I was like, I don't know. I wouldn't care if my mom heard it. Like whatever. It yeah. Was a rap battle. And then, uh, she. I was like, I'm sorry. Like it was a freestyle. I was just kind of just saying whatever. Like came to my head was rhyming. And she was like, that wasn't a freestyle. I'm not dumb. And in my head, I'm like, I got like a little ego boost. I was like, oh, she didn't. She know I'm fine. She know I'm fine. <laughs> but, yeah. but yeah, bro. They didn't believe it was a freestyle. Yeah. And then like I just kept making music throughout high school. I never gave up. Originally, like, my goal was, like, there was an artist named Joey Badass. Yeah, Joey's sick. Yeah, dude, I, I really liked him, and I, like, wanted to, he blew up, like, in the, like out of high school. Like, when he was still in high school, he popped off, and I was like, I want to be like Joey Badass and pop off and not have to go to college and mm -hmm. all that. And then it didn't work out like that. God has a different plan for all of us, you feel me? You can't just, like, try to be, you know, your your journey going to be different than everyone else's journey. Everyone's journey is different. So, like, you know, I um just... I never really gave up, bro. And I have like Iranian parents, like Iranian. My parents are from Iran, uh -huh. and like Iranian parents want you. They, they they probably prefer you to be a doctor or engineer or something like that, bro. But uh -huh. I just like kept just following my heart and like tapping in with like my creativity and the gifts that God gave me. Yeah, because I know that they're gonna. I know that they're gonna make me successful, bro. You know, everyone. You can't make someone an artist. And if someone is an artist, then they're an artist. You can never take that away from uh, them. Yeah, I feel the same way, actually. Mm -hmm. I think, like, talent exists, but it's very, very fleeting. Mm -hmm. I think, like, hard work and dedication and, like, mm -hmm. really a, a commitment to the craft is how you become, like, the greatest form of yourself. Yeah, exactly, perseverance. Because there's going to be things, there's going to be, like, roadblocks. you got to persevere. You can't be like, yo, I'm going a, I'm to a jump start the new cup company, right? Uh-huh. Yo, we we went out. We, we lost a bunch of money this year. Uh, it ain't working out. Let's give it up, nah, bro. You you want this to be the next cup that people use? You gotta you gotta persevere. You gotta keep failing until you succeed. You gotta fail your way to success. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, perseverance is everything. When did you first find that first bit of traction? Like, how long after uh, you got out of high school was it? Um, well, when there was this song called like Marty McFly that I made when uh -huh. I was in like 2015, 2016. How old are you? Uh, I'm 24 right now. 24, okay. Yeah. And um, basically what happened was uh, when I was when I was like in high school, I started listening to like a lot of vapor waves, synth waves, stuff like that. And I was like, yo, like I'll just listen to that stuff just because I thought it was sounded dope. And then I was like, yo, like I want to start rapping on this stuff. This yeah. stuff's hard. So then like I started um, making I started just like sampling like synth wave and vapor wave and stuff like that that I was just like finding on the Internet. That I thought was hard. And then like people in Brazil were really gravitating towards it. Shout out Brazil, bro. Brazil were like some of the first people from Brazil were some of the first people to really show me love, mm -hmm. you know, when I was younger. And um, 
yeah like that was like that's when i started getting like more traction but then like just you know continuing on some songs just like hit more than others and i just kept doing my thing like you know i've been at it for a minute but um recently you know you do you do stuff long enough like you start like you know learning like marketing you start learning like you know how 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 things are supposed to be like i guess done or like how to like promote something or this and that but basically last year i started getting more motion and i feel like that's mm -hmm. because because the holy spirit because yeah. of god and, and god trying to um use me even like i feel like when i started giving my life to god and and letting fulfilling God's plans for me I feel like I started really going up mm. like I feel like I'm really I feel like I'm, I'm getting blessed more than I'm not just trying to do it my own way yeah you know and I'm like yo God what you what do you want me to do mm. you feel me <laughs> it's interesting so you think it's like you finding your way and then God kind of like showing you the way and and yeah. you know blessing you no I think God always had I think I, I think I was always supposed to be like a music artist mm. and do it for God and and everything that's happening I think it was all divine. yeah because I never really even me being my, my name being Mike Sachi because when I did rap battles like in the classroom I went by like Sachi at that time I didn't go by Kid Mocha anymore and like but you look me up and like type in Sachi and like a bunch of other stuff would come up and like I remember I was like you know like sheesh like people aren't gonna be able to find my music and then uh, Miss E was like on this side we have Mike Sachi and I never went by Mike I always went by Michael my whole life and then I was just like I guess I'm Mike Sachi now. Damn. <laughs> like, let it be divine, bro. Like, and then you type in Mike Sachi, nothing would come up. So I'm like, all right, bet. Like, Miss E sounds sick. <laughs> she hard. Shout out Miss E. <laughs> That's fire, bro. Dude, yeah. I again, like, I just love like your passion for it. It's it, it seems really, really, really genuine and really sick. Yeah. And I love music, bro. I yeah. love art. Like, you know, I love creating, bro. Like, I I love I do a lot of DIY videos myself. Yeah. I love to just edit my own videos or have an idea and bring it to life. Like, bro, creativity is like just my part of my purpose on earth bro do you so, produce your all, all your stuff yourself or do you work with producers or i work with producers gotcha. i have some songs that i produce there's this like i guess like hyper pop folk type song that i that i self-produced and i have a bunch of unreleased stuff uh, um that i've produced but i'm still mm -hmm. working on the on perfecting my craft production wise yeah is, is, that, is that something you want to get better at in the future yeah i want to that's sick i want to progress as an artist in general like with everything from the mix to everything from like even even i want to get to a point where i'm like directing my own videos and like because i took screenwriting too at junior college like yeah so like i want to start being where'd you go dvc no, no no i went to srjc okay nice santa rosa Junior yeah. college but um i know a lot of people went to dvc though. yeah <laughs> but but yeah like uh i i want to start I really want to start just I wanted to I want to evolve in in even the music that I'm working on right now like uh -huh. I'm working on perfecting it making it sound more like professional and just like better bro like yeah. making better music not just being like content like the stuff I made last year was fire but bro like the stuff I'm about to come out with this year is gonna be crazy bro do you want to find more of a sound that you can settle into or do you want to keep expanding and doing different stuff because that was something that's really dope like your, your whole discography is very very different like 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 the hyper folk song you just did yeah. is like way different than some of the more gospel leaning stuff like mm -hmm. do you want to continue to every, have everything be that variant and that you know diverse or do you want to kind of niche down diverse mm -hmm. i want to make i make music the way i listen to music i kind of mm -hmm. listen to so much different type of stuff it's like you know it, music is fun when you're trying something different music is like you know, a lot of people will be like, oh, I, I do this one thing and it works. I want to stick to my brand. I want to yeah. stick to my, like, people know me for this. I'm comfortable right here. Like, this is my br sound and brand. And they just try to recreate the same thing over and over. It's like, nah, bro. Like, I'm not really about that. Like, I'm, yeah. trying, to, I'm trying to expand. I'm trying to eventually one day maybe even collaborate with, like, an actual Christian worship band. Whoa. And, like, stuff like that. And, like, and, like play live <laughs> with them? Yeah, like sick. cool stuff. Do do fun, different stuff. Be creative instead mm -hmm. of just like, oh, this got me in numbers or something. Let me just stick to this. Like, bro, like, nah. Let me. I don't know. It's just fun when you're when you take yourself out of your comfort zone. You yeah, 
Yeah, yeah, no, for sure. And I mean, you, you're putting out so much music constantly too. Like it makes sense. It kind of yeah. gives you the chance to like be able to like change up your sound as you go. Because yeah. I mean, I think very often people who put the, put out like very little music or music, you know, on a more rare basis, mm -hmm. they can pigeonhole themselves if something does really, really well. But mm -hmm. you, on the other hand, I feel like you're constantly putting out like yeah. different things. I'm constantly putting out different things like every week. Yeah, <laughs> and like. Yeah. I also like a lot of different things, <laughs> like, uh -huh. you know, musically, like, I'm all over the place, you know what I mean, like, and there's so many different types of beautiful music and different, I'm influenced by so many different things, bro. Yeah. I'm just, like, I'm just in the laboratory, like, hey, what's this, what's this, like, these things don't really, they're not really supposed to be together, let me just mix that together real quick, yeah. like, <laughs> you feel me? Do you ever feel like, do you ever get, like, creative Roblox, or are you somebody who creates, like, pretty much every day? I would imagine you're writing a lot of shit, because you're always putting stuff out, right? Yeah, um, creative Roblox, I feel like the only time when, uh, there's some times where I'm working on a song, and I'm like, I'm gonna come back to this, mm. um, just because I feel like I want to have a certain energy or maybe even I'm just like kind of tired and I'm like, I want to be really locked in when I make this song. But yeah. for the most part, um, I feel like the best thing when it comes to creative roadblocks is just get your hands dirty. Like that's one thing I realized is like, mm. sometimes I'm like, I will feel a little stuck, but it's like that stuckness is usually the overthinking of like not trusting yourself. Like just trust yourself, like just punch it in and put it in and later you can take those takes out if you don't like them and start over and completely like just delete everything and start from scratch but just start getting your hands dirty you feel yeah me? i really feel like like those moments of like there's this book called um um the uh the the war of art by stephen pressfield mm -hmm. and it, it really takes those concepts of like that like getting your hands dirty and that resistance and like those roadblocks and talks about how you have to kind of like work out of them. Yeah. I'm a big believer in that. Like, I yeah. think like when you're least inspired is probably when you should sit down and grind through it opposed to like mm -hmm. take a step back. And I, I guess that's just me though. I suppose it works differently yeah. for other people too. Sometimes we're just too focused on the result. Yeah. We're like, I want this to be perfect. I want this to be perfect. If you want something to be so perfect, cause it's, music is never going to be perfect. It's there's a subjectivity yeah. to it. So if you want something to be so perfect, it's just, you're just never gonna get your hands dirty. Mm -hmm. And the thing is like, we're not robots, we're not AI, we're not gonna gener generate it perfectly and accurately. We're gonna create whatever we have in our mind as close to the way we see it in our mind. And you do that by just like allowing it to flow, like the journey, bro, like that's, it's all about the journey. Like, And I think the beauty is kind of in the subjectivity of it. I think like the fact that like nothing is perfect and everything yeah. is flawed or like, it, you know, things are flawed in different ways. That's kind of the beauty of it. Cause it kind of gives stuff character, you know, if everything was this squeaky clean and as polished and boring as we possibly could make it. I mean, there's yeah. a science to that, mm -hmm. but it's not too interesting, you know? Yeah, no, there's subjectivity to it. I have like producer friends who tell me, uh, "Hey, bro, you you bass boosted this too much. You did this too much." Yeah. Many. And like, I was talking to one of my producer homies the other day, and I was like, "Cause they're more technical than I am. Mm -hmm. I'm more like, yo, it sounds good in my ears. <laughs> like, I like yeah. how it sounds." And uh, most people who listen to music don't make music, so True. they aren't nitpicking the way that engineers and producers are right yeah so i just try to play it by like the feeling and sometimes i'm like maybe i do want it too loud that's the point you know what i mean yeah. and i try to to not be too i, not, I try to not let the technicality trump the the feeling and hmm. that i'm trying to i guess provoke or make people feel from it or or how it makes me feel yeah i, I think that's a really key point like it is very easy, I think, as musicians to get caught up in this notion that, like, people are listening like musicians, mm -hmm. but they're really not. Like, 95% yeah. of people, if it sounds good to them, they're going to enjoy it and they're going to listen to it and they're not going to think anything else of it, you know? Thanks. It's like the actual, like, technical perfections really are irrelevant at a certain point. What, um, last thing I wanted to ask you, what is, like, if you had one message that you could spread, I've, I've kind of a guess what this going to be, but if you had one message that you, because I, I just asked everybody this, but if you had... <laughs> One uh, one message that you could spread to all the listeners of your music, you know, right now, in the future, and when one day you stop making music, what would that message be? Hmm, that's I like the way you phrased that. That was beautiful. Thank you. Um, <laughs> one thing I would say is like I would say, obviously, I'm gonna say, you know, you're never alone. 
God loves you. You have a purpose on earth. You might feel alone sometimes and feel like, you know, you're stuck. You f- might feel like you don't, you know, there's no one there. You know, maybe your whole life you've rejected God or whatever it is. But, you know, if you're at that point where you really just don't know where to go, like, tap in with the Most High. Like, if you you can come to Him dirty and He'll help you get clean. And I'm a testament to that. And another thing I will say is that, you know, you have a purpose. Like, we all have a purpose. And sometimes, like, our parents aren't going to understand it. Sometimes, like, people around us aren't going to understand it. But, you know, if you love something like and you you want to spend your time doing art or doing this and doing that and people are like go like if you're that delusional kid in their room who's like i'm gonna do this i'm gonna be the next quentin tarantino or the next whatever right like and people around you like yeah but be realistic though yeah but what's your plan b but yeah but what if you don't do it yeah but ah bro Put, go go on uh, and, uh, go on Amazon and buy some earplugs and put them in when people talk like that because you gotta you gotta filter that bro like if 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 you want to do something in life bro like the distance between dreams and reality is action <laughs> like you just gotta go get it go go get that you got that bro don't don't cause cause that's the thing like I've wanted to to do music. My whole life, bro, I remember crying in the car when I was younger because, like, my older siblings, they were like, what if you don't make it in music? Like, what if you don't do this? What if you don't? And I was just, like, crying. Like, you know, like, what's your plan B? Be realistic. And I was just crying, bro. Like, to this day, when people doubt me sometimes, I, I don't cry because, like, I I don't believe in myself. I cry because I'm like, sucks y'all don't have faith in me, hmm. you know? But yeah. then you end up doing it, and then people are like, Dude, you never gave up, bro. You're lit. Mm. And you're like, bro, I remember what you said, bro. <laughs> but yeah. no, I think that people should chase, like, you know, chase what what you love and, and do it in a positive way. You feel me? Like, we all have an impact. You don't have to be, like, a big art music artist to impact someone. Yeah. You know, like, either way, we all have a big impact on each other. Like, you're going to have an impact on your friends. Like, I'm going to have an impact on you right now. Like, we're all going to have an impact. And, like, I think that we should... Just try to have a positive impact on each other and just try to be there for each other and, and be like this, bro. Like, you feel me? Like, we're all a family in this life. And there's so much negativity going on right now, bro. Like, you just got to show each other love. And also, one thing I want to say is, like, for all these artists that, you know, only chase trying to serve their own ego and just, like, like I just want you all to think about, like, yo, the world isn't worth it. The kingdom of heaven is much greater. You feel me? Like, the world is, this is all temporary, bro. You feel me? Mm. And you could be, you could be feeling he- hell on earth. You know, you could be feeling heaven on earth. Like, you could be feeling it internally because you, you have the Holy Spirit with you. Or you could have the other guy with you. You feel me? So, just tap in. Can, can, if we're going to end it, can I end it with prayer? Yeah, let's do it. <laughs> you want to, right now? Can I, can I pray with you? Yeah, yeah, of course. I've never bro. really prayed, but... Do you want to be in it too? Sure. In the prayer? But come over here, bro. <laughs> we, should all, we should all, like, touch hands, uh, Let's bro. do it, bro. <laughs> it, let me know how, how, how this yeah, works. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This hand? Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, bet. This is beautiful. Oh, shit. All right. All right. Do I close my Dante, eyes? Dante, right? Yeah. All right. Mario, right? Mm-hmm. All right, cool. Yeah, close my eyes. Yeah, yeah, All yeah. Right. I can start too, and if you guys want to join in, you can after. Sounds good. All right, dear Lord Jesus, God, Holy Spirit, thank you for, uh, you know, giving me this platform, allowing me to come here, and uh, thank you for Dante and Mario for having me come here to, you know, spread uh the word, spread your word. Um, and impact people and spread a good message, spread your message and your love, Lord. Um, I pray that you bless them and their platform and that you bring success to them and then you help them with everything that they're doing and the things that they might be dealing with in their personal life, Lord, that you help them and you help them get closer to you, Lord, and let this be a seed that be planted. Lord, they're such amazing people and I thank you so much for connecting us all together, Lord. This was your divine plan and I pray that we can all come together, maybe even in the future, and in the in the glory of your name, Lord, work together on, on positive projects and help our communities and spread a good word, Lord. 
bless them and bless their families. And amen. In the, amen. In the name of the Lord. Thank you, brother. You, want, you guys want to pray too? Um, I'll just you know two time that double double that. Yeah, yeah beautiful, yeah, yeah. bro. Okay. Yeah, that, that was awesome. Thank Seriously. you for your kind words, man. I appreciate yeah, it. Of course, bro. That was beautiful, bro. That was very <laughs> educational for me. I feel like I learned a lot. Cool. I'm happy, yeah. man. It was sure, always bro. a good one. Thank you, man. I really yeah. appreciate you. Can I plug some stuff? I was just going to say that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Tell them where they can follow you, where they can find you, where they can stream um, you. I just want to let everyone know that Mike Sashi, Azrael, LJP2900, Disciple Church Jesus Gang, we going to tour in Canada in April. I'm going to keep you all posted on that. Also, Positivity Wave. Uh, Discord server. I'm gonna be doing Bible studies for y'all who want to connect. Hit me on Instagram. I'm gonna be posting about it soon. Um, I'm gonna be doing like Bible studies on my server, and it's a really positive community. You know, sometimes there's people in there that are going through things, and you know, we're all here for each other in that server. So it's like a really cool place. I had a producer homie in there the other day that was like, "It's crazy because I'm in so many like underground music servers, and like this." this one isn't toxic and i'm like bro it's positivity wave you feel me but <laughs> um but yeah and then also show oakland uh california uh april 1st me and my homies are gonna be there too um and i just want to say you know shout out zombie gang uh shout out azrael uh shout out paul paul 4k for supplying me with dope beats uh shout out mercy um uh, <laughs> i gotta shout everyone out now uh shout out everyone who supports me the people who listen to my music you know shout out to my family shout out to my dad for for uh whipping me here in the rain um for y'all who don't know it's literally like flooding out yeah, here today. that's crazy yeah crazy um, day. but i had to make sure that the, the message of the holy spirit got, got yeah. told because the devil don't want this two other interviews were, were wiped out somehow not randomly. this one not this one mm. <laughs> but um and yeah and also just shout out to you bro thank you for thank having you, me man. i really appreciate it i'm really glad to like meet you and like same brother you know like just connect with you even on like a friend level bro dude like, of course I'm, yeah i'm close by so like we gotta we kick it in. we're locked we'll in. hang bro i'm hella down always yeah, down, brother. <laughs> all right thank you maxachi amen music matters beautiful <laughs> uh.